the Horror Hangout podcast where two mustard coloured uh, horror fans watch the best and worst horror movies of all time. My name is Luke Connor with Kate and I'm joined by my regular co host, Mr. It's Mr. Ben Errington. Mr. Colonel Mustard. Mr. Uh, yes, Colonel Mustard. And uh, who am I? Dijon. Dijon. <laughs> Dijon Len. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if you just Dijon if Lennon, you listen to this or, or <laughs> if you're listening to just the audio, me and Luke have we've had a costume clash or a, an outfit clash. See when when like two guys have the same clothes on, it's like hey, bloody hell, <laughs> we're the, we're what a pair of legends we are. Yeah. So we're both wearing mustard colour hoodies, and I think it's the new horror hanger uniform. Yeah. Well, it's kind of baked into us from like football shirts. Like if you're wearing the same colour, like that was a good thing. If you're wearing a wrong yeah. colour, oof. <laughs> oh, you're in the wrong colour, are you? Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know what to do, don't blue. you? We're, fucking... We're in blue. Not the blues. You're the blues, you. are you? The bloody blues. <laughs> We're the reds, normally. It's normally reds and blues. <laughs> it's normally reds and blues. Yeah. I like uh, it when you get just like a ran- random colour there. Like uh, a Norwich City. What colour are they? Turquoise. A lovely, sh- a lovely shade of yellow. Angry a lovely shade of um, yeah. Coleman's mustard yellow. Oh, okay. Horror hangout colours. Nice. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, can you, can air, can you hear right? the uh, the rumbling from down below? Is it it's, your tummy? No, uh, it's actually um, I, I broke down and got a space heater, one of those little little ones on the chair here, nice. keeping my knees toasty. Yeah. Have you, so, you have you got a hospital blanket today? No, no, I don't know what it is. Mm. Someone stole it. Oh, wait. Well, someone stole the, the hospital, hospital blanket must have from. Snuck it to my house to steal it back. The hospital wanted it back. We got, we're low on funding. Give us this bloody blanket back. You're the end in NHS no, stands so. for Ninja. Ninja Hospitality uh, Services. Okay, got yeah. you. Snuck in. <laughs> he snuck into the... How did he get in? To the garage. I don't know. I must have, I must have given him the key. Uh, left, the do- left the door open again. Yeah. So, have you... Oh, yeah. Okay, so, last week we did the quiz. Uh, I don't know who won. <sighs> I think it might have been someone who was wearing a mustard coloured jumper. Uh, and uh, so okay so there's a couple of uh, answers that I gave that were not correct I didn't know if they were incorrect or or correct I just here here we bloody go then tribunal but uh, I think um, I can't remember who pointed out on on Twitter to Andy that a couple of them weren't correct one it was the Carrie remake so I one of my answers I was like I think there's been two remakes of Carrie so I'm going with Carrie remake as well but the second or the middle carry remake was a TV film, which I don't think Andy was uh, yeah. was counting. He wasn't. He wasn't hot on it. No. Who, so the eagerly who, who would have who would have uh, won that round if uh, that happened? Me, because I, I, I came. I came second. Like I came second yeah, every time in that you know, yeah, round. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then the other one, which I don't think <laughs> I pointed out, but I was like, oh, I better double check that as well. Uh, was Trucks, which was the other. Um, uh, adaptation of the short story trucks. Uh, one was the Green Goblin faced one. Stephen King directed himself, which uh, the name escapes me now. The, the um, Green Goblin called... car. <laughs> the Goblin car. It's, it's called cool. Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the other one is called Trucks. That was a Canadian TV movie. Um, you just bloody love the TV movies, clearly. I guess so. Uh, but so I mean, I mean, I don't think it would have changed the points that much, but. You know, that was quite early in the game, so would that have changed the so I think morale? Of the morale. Well, well, I think, this is what I'm going to say. I think if just hypothetically me or, or Heather would have won one of those rounds, I think you probably still would have been ahead. And I think overall, Heather didn't bet enough points at the end to have actually overtaken you. Mm. And I bet all my points, so I think it would have been irrelevant, kind of. <laughs> Unless you were right. I think I mean, it's not... Yeah. Unless I was right, yeah, exactly. But I think it's one of those things where I don't think it would, it would, it would have affected things enough that there was a ch- change of score. People are always course, like, uh, if... gold line, get gold line cameras in. Or whatever get gold line cameras in for the bloody thing. Senses. Um, they just need someone really quickly Googling something to go, you're wrong, Luke, and you think you're right, but you're wrong. And, I mean, I should have been more bitter about it because you tried to grasp me up at least four or five times. Yeah. <laughs> during that quiz. I didn't like your attitude, to be fair. It was just... <laughs> If if Heather is listening to this and she feels hard done by that she wants a rematch, yeah. I'm sure we'd be happy to be involved in that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Maybe she wants a rematch where we can finally do two on two Valkyries versus Horror Hangout. Um, but we've put the Thank challenge out there and we've we already received. 
We need a yeah, we like need a belt. championship belt. Yeah. Cardboard, cardboard belt. Um, <laughs> we've put the challenge out there, and already we've had some responses. So from um, John Crinan and Zoe Smith from a nice Chianti podcast, have already been um, talking trash on Twitter, basically saying we're real. We'll own this. We'll nail this. Oh, I'm so glad you're on my side. All that stuff. I've tried not to get involved. To be fair, I've posted a couple of gifts to just show that I was also <laughs> confident. Yeah. But other than that, and we've also had Edward Harvey and Johan Schiphol, um from the Trash Tapes, who are also willing, it would seem. Interestingly, to take they, us they're on. not the people with the Trash Talk. It's the people not doing the Trash Tapes yeah. podcast for the. Maybe it's the people with that. it. With giving it all that. Maybe the Trash Talk is that? just you know <laughs> what you're trying to what you're trying to prove. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll see if we can beat all of these people. You know, I think a crown. It's going to take a lot of training, a lot of training montages, a lot of. Uh, studying like the power range did between fights i i felt i don't know how you felt but i felt like i did a lot better on this quiz than i did the first one yeah. because we've been we've been uh, like this is like our university <laughs> our hangout. yeah <laughs> i just seem to feel what's happened to the eater mate don't cause a fire in the in the little garage i don't want to see your mustard hoodie burn i guess put it up here can you hear the heater i like it it's ambiance isn't it Okay, good. Um, Warm oh, so That is a bit loud, actually. Okay, alright, move down here. <laughs> it was alright initially, and then it started vibrating. <laughs> that wasn't heater. I don't want you. I want your. I want your knees to be toasty, Luke. I don't want you to have cold knees doing this podcast. That's the last thing I want. I said it. Yes. So I feel like I re- the first time around, I really, really struggled to mm. get into like some sort of groove. This time, I felt pretty confident. There are a few answers I gave where I felt confident with them, but they were wrong. <laughs> so, so like I don't know what it was really, and the fact that Andy threw in a couple of Congo questions, I should have seen him kind of come in really, shouldn't I? Um, so even though I say Congo is not a horror film, he mis he misinterpreted the fact that I actually do like Congo, and I've seen it quite a lot of times. You knew more about so it he than was, me. He was trying to throw a curveball at me, trying to think that I wouldn't know because I think Congo is not a horror but film. You've been when in fact you've been catching curveballs since you were two. You, I've been but... catching the curveballs, mate. I've made the curveball. I'm the king of the curve. You were born Ball. in curveballs, raised in it. <laughs> like Bane yeah, in the raised dark. in it. <laughs> I was born in the curveball, raised, bolded by it. Bold by curveballs, yeah. Um, what else? So, yeah. Uh, so... Um... Yeah, I don't know. Would it have changed anything? I know what you mean. I... I was feeling a bit better about it. After the first couple of rounds, I was like, oh, actually, I'm getting a few of these right. So I was doing all right. Yeah, I think I was just. Yeah, I just get, got. There were a few. I mean, the rounds were great. I think the rounds were great. Um, George A. Romero. The, the thing is, I think one thing that got me, that kind of tripped me up, was the uh, I ended up answering the box office numbers for Friday the Thirteenth, and it's not really a franchise that I've ever really liked. So. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So um, that was tough for me because I didn't really know much about them. And I got the Rotten Tomatoes things for Friday the Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Fred, it's, I think I, said, it's I, think I made Freddy? the same. <laughs> yeah. That's what they should have called Freddy versus Jason, for God's sake. Freddy they should have called it Freddy the 13th. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Trick. Um, which I knew yeah. quite well. I mean, I, knew, I think I knew that one. Oh, okay, go. okay. So, uh, you got your news for us? Uh, got ben. a few bits of horror news. Uh, yeah. So, M. Night Shyamalan's <laughs> Servant is coming to Apple TV Plus. Do you know much about His Apple TV Plus? His servant is coming to Apple TV Plus. <laughs> servant is coming to Apple TV Plus. His servant has made a show because he's got such he's such a great character. He's got good connections. Um so apparently I don't know if it's a film or a series. What is it? It's a TV series, um, isn't it? I think it's a Apple Plus original T V series. I think. I don't know. So it's about a couple who hire a nanny to take care of a eerily realistic baby doll that they use to help Dorothy deal with the trauma of losing a newborn child so then they hire a so obviously something's gonna happen where a bloody doll comes alive or something like that be like the boy you seen the boy with the doll and the boy i haven't seen, I haven't seen the boy <laughs> okay the doll and the boy but i mean i know what it is yeah so i don't know how i feel about these apple plus t apple tv plus shows because i saw like a infographic recently which said if you subscribe to like all of these different things mm. hbo now tv you're amazon almost paying Netflix, as much as sky you're basically paying like 100 100 pounds 120 dollars something like that which seems seems mad is this just going to push everyone towards piracy even more not that we would ever ever do that luke 
Well, I don't I mean, uh, you can't you just get loads of email addresses and sign up for trials? Oh, no, they, 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 they have a way around it, don't they? They make you put your card details in first. And they expect you to forget. But I never do. <laughs> <laughs> they expect me to forget. They don't know I'm an expert. I was were, I were born in the, in the piracy game. Yeah. Shaped by it, molded by it. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I haven't watched the trailer yet, but I might watch it. Why not? It's a little, little doll coming to life. Very nice. M. Night Shyamalan. Hit and miss. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other news: uh, the Color Out Space trailer is out online now. Richard Stanley, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Richard Stanley, Nicolas Cage, Lovecraft. That's a weird combination of people when you think about it. Um, coming together to make a, a sort of megazord of craziness. Wow, a that, they are crazy. all three of those people are nut nutcakes. Like Nicolas Cage is the nutcakiest of nutcakes on captured on screen yeah. uh richard stanley have you seen the um the thing about him making alan dr moreau and him uh no going wandering through south africa for 15 years wherever it was um he's he's into magic and all this kind of stuff a bit bit alan moore in a way uh but he's a bit of a um, nut box and then uh lovecraft all the stories about people becoming uh nut cabins <laughs> Nut cabins, <laughs> nut box, a cab, a cabin, and nuts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it'd be interesting. I had a quick flick through the trailer. I didn't watch it all, but I saw there was definitely some colours from outer space in that trailer. So it's it's looking like it's going to be ideal. Mm, yeah, I'll watch that. I'll watch that soon. I think. Yeah. What else? What else you got for us? Um, so Doctor Sleep came out this week. I think the US are getting a little bit later than everybody else because we're bloody special. Um, I'm not going. Well, I think we're going to talk about it next week. So I've seen it. You haven't seen it. So I'm not going to go flying in with spoilers. Did you read the book? No. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> I mean, you haven't read the book, but I'd say it's a really, really loyal adaptation of the book. Um, it does. It's, Look, it's how, e well, uh, so. I have questions because I know the, on, the, shi the Shining book ends different to the mm -hmm. Shining movie, like the Correct. the hotel so, explodes. This, yeah. But I mean, if you take that uh, that fact alone, yeah, and put it into this universe, um, but then obviously change it to the to the way the film ends. So it works as it's an adaptation of the book, a really loyal adaptation of the book, in a universe where the film is the original version of the story. Does that make sense? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is. It doesn't go right. We're going to be an adaptation. We're going to be an adaptation of Doctor Sleep working as a sequel for The Shining, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's still a very loyal. It's very Stephen King. It feels very Stephen King, but it leans into the Kubrick stuff when it sort of needs to. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and very, it ve very heavily when it. I mean, it's not a spoiler to say because obviously it's in the trailers, and I'm sure you know as well that the over they do go back to the Overlook Hotel. What? Oh yeah. Hey, you scared me then, spoiler. my little, my little. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. It's in the, in the trailer, isn't it? God. So I love this shot. Where have you been then? Yeah, so, I mean, it's great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing it again, but it is quite long. It sort of is about two and a half hours long. Um, but yeah, check it out. Let us know what you think. Horror Hangout, Board of Advisors, Facebook group. We can chat about it, but we're going to review it next week. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Um, what have you and seen? in terms of other news, oh, oh, good morning. nothing. Oh, okay. No other news, mate. In terms of what I've seen, so upon your recommendation, I watched As Above, So Below. I think ah, I watched that. Interesting. I think I watched that the night after we'd we'd done our little quiz. I needed a little bit of a wind down. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a bit iffy on these fine footage films, but I feel like it had enough of a story to back up the scares. It wasn't just you know well so uh, uh, like as a percentage uh yeah. out of 100 percent, what what percent number would you give to it assign to it oh uh, what like uh, a rating like i just want to compare your percentage against rotten tomatoes percentage okay. well i rate it well i've rated it on letterbox you can follow me on letterbox ben underscore erickson and i rated it i gave it three and a half stars so i rate it five out of sorry three out of five so 70 percent 
yeah, so it's like twenty two percent or so. It's around that mark on. Yeah, I, mean, that's, I mean that's mental. I've it's, seen it's a lot. Far of, too low. Yeah. I've seen a lot of utter crap, and the fact <laughs> that it was like, it was it was claustrophobic. It was bizarre. It was really unique. Sort of the stuff they did was sort of like, yeah, I don't know. And I mean, from I mean, it felt like the descent, yes, in places, but. But in the, in the the location, I think is quite a big yeah. selling point of it. And again, a, a, a lot of people have said it's like a horror version of Tomb Raider, and I guess yeah. yeah it's, um, and in the new Tomb Raider game, there's actually some fairly similar sort of claustrophobic bits and bobs. Yeah. In Shadow of Tomb Raider, so it reminded me of that. Um, and then I watched some stuff on Halloween. I had a I had a double feature on Halloween, uh, a family friendly and a not so family friendly. I when watched was Halloween. What day was last, it? Last Thursday, I believe. I don't know what happened. I don't remember what I did. I don't know what happened, mate. Oh, I put a bloody bowl of sweets out on a doorstep. I think I know what I watched. I know what I watched. Yeah. Okay. So I watched Hocus Pocus. Um, probably a film I've seen so many times growing up because my sister used to watch it all the time. They're making a but... squeak, aren't they? Squeak call, you know. They yeah. always seem. To, I've always seen a, a, a fake poster shared on social media all the time. It's coming soon. Does anybody care enough? I mean, probably. I think they would with Hocus Pocus. Yeah, I mean, it is hmm. a, a Halloween banger, isn't it? I yeah, think that's fair, yeah. fair to say. It's one one of the quintessential Halloween family movies. Um, yeah, and I love that shit. But I also watched um, the Evil Dead remake, probably for the first time in quite a while. Okay. Interesting. I watched I watched it with like a group of friends, so I think it's, oh, like, it's good. Good, uh, good like party movie. I think that one. Yeah, yeah, great party movie. A lot of ah, and a lot of ah, and yeah. even more. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. All I those mean, kind of parties. okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a great remake because <laughs> it is a totally different experience to the original. It's a completely different vibe, despite being the same setting and stuff. And it's just like relentless. Yeah, it's a relentless gore fest, and you know, it's pretty damn creepy. It's great. I like it. I mean, the rain and blood moment is to me, I think, pretty genius. Like it just feels like the movie's ended, and then it just yeah. throws in another really horrific scene at the end, where she rips her arm As, off. Do you think that film has got the the use the most use of like fake blood ever? Uh, maybe I, heard... I think uh, I read somewhere like the the practical effects are, like <coughs> un, unheard of, like the amount of uh, practical effects that they put into that film. I heard maybe it chapter two had a had a sequence with more, with even more fake blood. But oh, okay, yeah, but probably not used to the same degree as this yeah this is uh yeah great but that was it that was all i've really watched this week how about you luke uh okay well i thought i watched some more maybe i'm forgetting your film here um as well above so below no talk about that uh, i'll tell you what so housebound i shoved that on sugar uh the other night halloween night i think it was have you heard of housebound no it's quite I a, I have. quite a low budget New Zealand horror movie, horror comedy, but it doesn't feel that low. But it's kind of low budget in the sort of, uh, uh, you can tell like it's like a uh, a local film fund, um, a national film fund has sort of funded the film. So it feels similar. It's reserved. It doesn't feel like it goes far over the top with special effects or anything. But it does feel very contained and it's smaller and it's a a nice little um, film based all in one house, which is why it's called Housebound. It's about a woman who gets arrested and she gets one of those tags on her ankle and then she's in this house and then she finds out, she has to say in her mum's house, um, it's just, she finds out that it's haunted. Ah. That's the, but it doesn't, it doesn't end there. Like there's there's so many twists. It constantly twists around. Uh, And it's it's a really, like the characters are really funny. Um, There's a really great bit where she's peeing in the middle of the night and you can hear it on the toilet. It's a really, it's a really great <laughs> bit where she's been up and a deal with a foot. Yeah, go on. But then she keeps hearing noises and like she follows like where the noises are coming from, and, every, and you can tell when she gets scared because the peeing stops, and then she relaxes and it starts peeing again. And it's just a really like wicked little <laughs> like <laughs> visual yeah. audio gag. Uh, it's I thought it was really good. Um, and also I watched the Terminator Dark Fate, which uh, okay, which I would class as a horror movie in some sense. I mean, not full on yeah. horror movie. It's got some. A lot of people die for no reason in that film. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. A lot of people die for no reason. I like my Terminators where people die for a reason, all right? But I mean, like... Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. I'll, I'll tell you after we stop recording. But um, people, there's like a certain bit where some people have died. And I think they only died 
because they were trying to recreate the moment in Terminator 2 where T-1000 killed the parents. It just um, seemed like that was it. Like they were just trying yeah. to sort of recreate that. Uh, there but... was a lot of that, though. There was, there was a lot of that. There was some sort of... there were, As all these films tend to do, there was a re- repetition of certain lines. But sometimes lines were said like that that didn't really have any context. Uh, you, know I mean? <laughs> you mean like... Because they said, I'll, I'll be back about three times, I think, in different yeah. ways. Sarah I'm Connor's back. character I'm not says, back. I'll be back. I'll be back. But I will be back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a... but I think like the, the the new characters in this were pretty good. Like there, yeah. there's a again, this isn't a spoiler. I think this is in the trailer as well. But there's like a an enhanced human who's sent back rather than rather than a human yeah. to protect, or rather than a Terminator, or you know, to protect. He's like the Kyle Reese. Yeah. I mean, Kyle. it does. It it strikes. It. I mean, it does. It ticks all the boxes that you would expect one of these films to do, but I preferred it to Terminator Genesis. Yeah, because I think more. Terminator Genesis was very, very like hammy. I thought hammy, and there were so many moments in the trailer. Like there were plenty of moments in this film which kind of went, "Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's shot. I haven't seen that." But there were so many. But Terminator Genesis, the trailer was the film. Yeah, this film, if you if you looked if you overlooked all the plot stuff, um, which was all kind of cheesy to me and, and kind of re- re-stepping retreading on old ground or whatever and sort of changing stuff that probably didn't need to be changed the actual action yeah. scenes were pretty fantastic like they really sort of drew me in there's like the robots getting smashed in the face with hammers there's a genuine sense of danger there was uh, there's some funny bits of Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger being like a painter decorator sort of guy and it doesn't make yeah, too much sense like, when you yeah. think about it but it was very funny <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah I, I liked yeah. it I thought it was pretty cool um, I, I wouldn't say it's the best film ever but it's just yeah. fun. Yeah. It's pretty perfectly enjoyable for a Terminator film. Yeah. Um, consider considering Genesis really was lowest of the low for me. But you know, great stuff. People say they don't like uh, Salvation Good stuff. Salvation's the worst, but I actually all right. I thought Salvation was okay. I think Salvation it. Salvation's it's not great, but you know, it's hmm. it's watchable. Yeah. It's bloody watchable, isn't it? Yeah. And then uh Pandorum, obviously. Um so ah. <laughs> Pandorum. I told you to watch it. Yeah. Have you got some notes on what it's about? Yes. So, Pandorum is a 2009 science ho- science fiction horror film. Um, hot film. The film was directed by Christian Alvart and stars Dennis Quaid, Ben Foster, among others. Two crew members of a spaceship wake up from hypersleep to discover that all their colleagues are missing. Despite this, it appears they are not alone. It's at home alone where they uh, they realise they've wished away their colleagues. <laughs> yeah. I made my crew members disappear. <laughs> yeah. Ding, 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 ding. And then you're just parting. Yeah. It's got the stabby ship. bandits in it. Um, there's, uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, 28% Rotten Tomatoes. Again, Ooh, I don't think that's... Well, nasty. we'll come to it, we'll come to it. Well, 49% reuse this score. Again, I think that's a bit like 6.7 on IMDb. Uh, Ron Tomato said while it might prove somewhat satisfying for devout sci-fi fans Pandorum's bloated derivative plot ultimately leaves it drifting in space which is like wrong on many levels we will find out throughout the film it doesn't leave it drifting in space at all no uh, okay so uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah so I got to I mean I remember watching this I think it I don't remember when I first watched it but I think it was one of those ones where you're in bed at like 3 in the morning which is where I tend to be at 3 in the morning and you sort of randomly watch the TV, and it just came on. I had no idea what it was, never heard of it, and I just sort of started watching it, and I was like, this is actually pretty fun. I was kind of getting into it, um, and I've watched it a few times over the years, and I don't think it's... I mean, okay, I don't think it's a perfect film, but and there's some stuff, I don't like the kung fu stuff anymore. I've kind of grown past the point where there's like a... Why is there a botanist who knows kung fu? Like, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Uh, but... I still think there's something about this film that's quite enjoyable. So, yeah, so I'd never seen it before. I'd seen the DVD cover, like, everywhere. And I knew... So the DVD cover with with the arm of all the wires coming out of it, I'd seen it in, like, CEX for, like, 50p all the time. I was like, I should really... I do really know that film, because it's... I mean, a genre, sci-fi horror, is a very... It's quite a small genre, isn't it? Yeah. We don't get loads and loads and loads of these films. And when you do get these films, they do all tend to feel like they borrow from each other. And I think that's just... The, way, the nature of the beast because yeah. you know when you've got like a a, a threat on the really claustrophobic space like a spe- like a like a like a spaceship yeah it, it can't they kind of all feel the same like it for me 
um, I've gone back and been playing the original Dead Space recently, so it felt very Dead Space. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it, do, it does feel very Event Horizon. I think in the yeah Event Horizon, I think it's produced by a similar company. Um, let's look into that. Uh, but uh, so it's, it feels very dirty. I think the architecture is quite goodness like the architecture of the the spaceship the design mm-hmm. aesthetically it's pretty cool so lots of like rubber tubes in it for some reason yeah um, rubber tubes uh oil lots like of motor grease, oil. yeah motor oil and stuff greasy yeah. um it feels very industrial bleach I guess. all the colors are like really bleats in the film yeah and there are parts and that 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 transition from these areas into like the really brightly lit laboratories laboratories and stuff yeah. is really good um and i i love ben foster you know i think yeah, he's, he's fantastic he's great yeah. Yeah. So, he's pretty underrated, I think. He, I mean, he does get a lot of a lot of good roles, a lot of leading roles. I think the people who who know him and appreciate him really know and appreciate him. Like, yeah, we all love him. Uh, I think the last the last thing I saw of him was Leave No Trace. Have you seen? No, I don't think so. That's, that came that came out last year. It's about it's a guy living like neo western thing. No, but it's like a guy living in the wilderness with his daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, sort of like a drama. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yeah, like westerns like Hello High Water, Free That's Descent to Yuma. Yeah. Um, he, he was in the adaptation of that Galveston, which I saw. It wasn't yeah. too great, but he was good. I think he's he's always like the the the, the standout sort of character yeah. in almost every film he's in. Dennis he's Quaid very... was in this. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, Dennis Quaid. You know, oh, I can't remember the last time I saw Dennis Quaid in. He's uh, that's I know a great it was. name. Is that one? Think... Is that one where the dogs where the dog dies? I told you about, and then he comes oh, back okay. into another dog's body. <laughs> He was in that. Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah. It's just, that, that true it. story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Dennis Quaid's pretty good, and I think there's enough mystery in this film that for it to unravel as the plot progresses and you find out more and more about what's been going on, um, it feels quite satisfying, I think. There are definitely some elements of the film which I kind of didn't like so much. I well, think it gets quite... Okay. Bo- Go on, sorry. Sorry, I'm not going not, not to go into it massively, but as you said, some of the sort of action sequences and stuff like that, um, I feel like sometimes the characters get stuck in like one area and I feel like we linger there a little bit too long. Yeah. Got it, then. Come on. Yeah, um, the kung fu stuff that... I don't know. Why are they so good at kung fu? <laughs> like, well, yeah, I know it's not it, kung fu, but like it it's, feels a bit... it's hand-to-hand combat in a sort of martial yeah. arts sort of way. It doesn't make sense. It feels a bit Resident Evil. Yeah, those parts, yeah. It? It feels Maybe that's like what the... they were going for. They were like, Resi's big right now. Yeah. Let's have some fighting. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, I kind of expected it to be something completely different from what I kind of thought I knew about this film. You know, sometimes when you kind of think you know what... what and it was completely different. Um, whether that was in a really good way, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I didn't take too too much. Uh, is there... Uh, somebody, um, like the camera movements... Uh, the very European action movie, if you know what I mean by that, like where um, they sort I, of do these weird, like fast tracking shots where the speed seems to ramp I up. I kind of down. felt, yeah, I think I felt the same. So the director, Christian Alvar, is German, yeah, and it doesn't seem like he's made anything that is um, big budget or sort of an American film for an American studio. He's made a lot of, you know, um, supernatural horror films slash action films. That seem like they're you know European, European made and produced and put out. So maybe that's what you're getting there, mate. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of elements in this film. There's some like hardcore sci-fi stuff, some hardcore horror stuff that remind me of John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. Yeah, oh yeah, but in a good way, <laughs> yeah. in a better way than yeah. the film. Um, Very Ghosts of Mars bits, definitely. Um, yeah, and I can say John he, Carpenter uh, of Mars, <laughs> but uh... John Carpenter of Mars, yeah. yeah. He's, he was there, uh, and the descent again, I guess. Yeah. Main, mainly because of the, the there's a claustrophobic the bit in it, as well. Yeah, in there's in a very claustrophobic. Oh, there's a very claustrophobic bit in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of elements. I don't think you needed that extra raid style martial arts stuff going on. Like I don't know. The, if they removed that element, I think this film would have been exponentially better. Like if they just got rid of the, the fancy. High yeah, flying kicks, and... and there are a lot of things in this film. You know, when you're watching a film, sometimes you're just like, if everyone just stopped for a moment, sat yeah. down, had a chat, and worked out what the f- was going on, the film would be a lot. I know it wouldn't really be much of a film, 
But everyone would go, oh, that's what happened, is it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of like, who are you? I, I just woke up. Ah, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a fight with you. Just like, no, tell me what's going on. I just woke up. Oh, yeah. you'll never know. There's, there's a lot there, of that. There's two of them that start fighting, and he's like having to stop them fighting, like to team up. We can work together. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bit cheesy. You know, you know when yeah. it's like communication in real life yeah. is key. And I, I don't like it when you watch a film and you're like, this could easily be, you know, completely, yeah, completely bypassed if they just had a chat. You yeah. know, when there's like a plot twist in a film and you're just like, someone's just got to say, actually, this is the case. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be a film. I mean, it must be a better, a better way of doing it, I guess. Uh, but I mean, yeah. let's uh, jump into the, the plot a little bit. It is quite complicated. Um, people in a spaceship. So it starts off, yeah. uh, it's got the bloopity bloop writing. It goes like 2009, <laughs> uh, Earth did something, the resources are running out on the planet, so they have to send people to Tanis, which is a, a planet that's very like Earth, it has some plant life on it, so they've sent out the la- the, Ely- the Elysium ship, which has the last, well they don't say it's the last of humanity, they just say it's got a shitload of humanity on it. Yeah, yeah. And So it's got 60,000 people on it, and I think they've got like loads of different types of plant life and various other um, DNA to, yeah. to basically colonize Tannis, which is an Earth-like planet um, where, where, yeah, so where they can basically move and, and thrive. There's uh, the concept of Pandorum, which uh, is a title of the film, which I kind of feel like is maybe a small part of the, kind of a sm- yeah. smaller part of the film, really. But it's the film yeah. starts off with... Um, it's it's explains it. Pandorum is some sort of uh, paranoid condition you get when you realise that you shouldn't be in space or something like that, and then people always freak out and uh, something happens. Yeah. It's, it's like psychosis, yeah. and it's basically like where you go, oh, what am I doing in space? I just want to go back. Yeah, <laughs> ah! you, I I should mean, be out here. It's it's quite a, a cool concept. I mean, it could be real. Uh, we don't know. We've never. It never could be. Left. I'm sure there's something like that. There must be something yeah. where you just go. Bloody hell! I am miles away from home. You know, when if, you I get... to, if I wanted to get home, it'd take ages. You know, when you get piled on at school, and then you suddenly develop <laughs> like Hulk-like strength to get out. <laughs> yeah, it's that thing. The... Yeah, that's Pandora. We, we hear the stories of like mums, like a car crashes and like it lands on their kid, and they just go, "I'm gonna lift the car above my head." Yeah, uh... just like that. <laughs> it's just like that. Yeah. So. um we cut to some unknown time later. We don't know how long it is in the future. Uh, one of the guys wakes up and it's Ben Foster. <laughs> the actor, for some yep. reason, in space. Um, yep. what's, what's oh, Corporal I don't Bauer. know. Okay, Bauer. Okay. So he's Corporal Bauer, uh, Dane Bowers, Bowser. <laughs> and he wakes up and he's like got old tubes in him and he's got like skin, extra skin. Yeah. He's all. I mean, everyone when they wake from hypersleep tends to. I mean, it doesn't look nice, does it? You know, when you uh, does... have like uh, Sunday roast dinner the next day, and the gravy's yeah. got like a skin on it. Yeah, That's, it's got like gravy skin on him. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wakes up from hypersleep like they've just woken up and realise they've slept through their alarm. Yeah, it's like fried. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he gets out of his is uh Cute. vertical tub and he's like oh it's dark in here and the like the, the power's gone in the ship it's almost like it's like there's no power it's, it's just completely blank um he manages to get one of the other people awake uh who is dennis quaid uh his yeah. name is lieutenant payton um and they they're like walking around they don't know what's going on one of them goes hang on i've got an idea and he has like a little windy torch thing that powers up the console and then ben yeah. foster's like why didn't i think about that and i was like I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Ben Foster does this bit where he shines a torch directly into Dennis Quaid's face immediately yeah. as he's woken up. I mean, that must be horrible when you've woken up from eight hours sleep, let alone God knows how long hypersleep. How many years? Yeah. They shine it, shine it straight in his face. He's like, "Fucking get out of my face, mate! I'm absolutely <laughs> hanging." Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it moves pretty quickly. I guess because it's like we need to get out. We're not in the bridge. They're in some other part of the ship. And they're like, we need to get into the bridge to see what's going on. But the doors yep. are all locked because there's no power in the ship. Uh, so he sends uh, Ben Foster into the uh, chutes. 
Uh, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's where he gets all. Um, because the tubes, he's really dark. You just see his face. You see these really rubbery tubes all around him. They don't look like it's a bit HR Geiger, isn't it? Really, the all yeah. of the chippy stuff, but a little bit, a little bit more rubbery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's also got a bit of a twitchy hand, you know, which we're made to think he's got some sort of weird. They both got amnesia as well, which they both explain that after you wake up from hypersleep, it takes a while for you to get yeah. everything back. So I think they're both a bit like, what did I have for breakfast? All those years ago, you know when you you suddenly cringe at a memory of something you did ages ago. Yeah. Why did I do that? These guys are going to get that oh, head hard. Jesus, that some of my balls fell out. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ben. At one point, Ben Foster goes, "Oh no, I'm at an angle." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just just wiggle, wiggle back, stay still. You're going to get out of it. He's like, "No, I'm trapped." Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. I mean, the camera shakes, so you know it's like hardcore. And he yeah. slips. He slips off because he goes up at an angle. It's like when a cartoon realizes there's no more floor, and it's like whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and he he falls yeah. down and smashes his face into this grate, and goes. <laughs> makes all the <them> noises. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of times where where Ben Foster falls like from from like a vent at the very top of the thing directly down to the floor. Yeah, and I think that's got it. That's got to knock the wind out of you. So this is weird because that shoot, he lands on his face in this thing and he gets out, but then the sh- it was inside a locker with loads of shoes. Yeah. Why was that? Shoot? He's like, he's like, I'm in the shoot. I-, I was in, I was in the shoot, I was in the shoot or whatever. And then he goes, actually, I was in the boot locker all along. How'd he get in there? <laughs> <laughs> he came out of a boot on his head, like, oh, there yeah. you go. Boots on his hands. So um, pretty much when he gets out of there, he finds a body, doesn't he? There's like a dis- disemboweled body. Looks like it's been <laughs> boots on his hands. He's just walking along. Like, oh, 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 no. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually quite good for my hands. Um, finds a body. The body looks like it's been there for a while, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is the way I think. So it looks like the, the ship looks like so much time has passed where it doesn't look... It's not clean. Everything's super dirty. Like we said, with the, the motor oil and the grease... Um, there's like a dead body looks like it's been there for like it's desiccated it's been there for cleaners haven't been in cleaners haven't been in Um, and then so he starts wandering through and then he comes across Norman Reedus yeah (laughs) uh, we were all surprised at that point yeah I mean yeah (laughs) I was like is that Norman Reedus it's really strange because like before this I've been watching loads of Death Stranding videos like reviews and other gameplay bits and I almost felt like maybe I was imagining it (laughs) I was almost like (laughs) Norman Reedus. Yeah. Well, I've just been watching so much Norman Reedus, and now he's here. <laughs> but his character, I mean, obviously, yeah, all those years ago, he wasn't half as successful as he is now. So it's hmm. a tiny little part where he kind of is strung up. He and, thinks he's dead, doesn't he? Be- at some point. Yeah. yeah. Ben Foster sets him free. But this is another thing. No one seems to communicate. No one seems to say, "This is what we're running from. What are you doing? I've been awake for this long." Everyone seems to just be all panicky. Yeah, at this point we As don't know what's be, I guess. going on. I don't think we've seen any any alien life or whatever. But Norman Reader says, "Run! You can't follow me because you're." Uh... Also, he's from the flight crew. He's the flight crew that's supposed to wake them up, and he's like, "Oh, you only just woke up. Um, you need to get with the program, man." Whatever he says. Yeah. He runs away. So and, he, 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 and Ben Foster chases after him with his boot hands. Come back! <laughs> On all fours, galloping. Yeah. And is it now when we sort of see like a blue light the, these... down the dark cor- corridor? Yeah. Yeah. So there's these blue lights and these sort of weird noises. Da! Da! Yeah. Like that. And there's some kind of creature, you know, just been just hunting them or trying to kill them. Um, and they he's kind of hides briefly, and they like run and jump over this gap. Is that right? He sort of, so we sort of see him a little bit better. Yeah. But Ben Foster, because he's running off, they look like doesn't make it. He slips down the hole. Uh, slips down. Yeah. I think we see them now. So they're like a cross between the creatures and, and like those, what were those orc slash goblin things in Lord of the Rings? The ones Uruk-hai. that Saruman made. Uruk-hai, yeah. Uruk-hai, yeah. They look, they look like them. Um, loads of them got their nose off. Got their nose um, off they were all, yeah. they've all got like um, sort of armor that looks like it's made of like bits of the ship. Yeah. Um, they're proper, they're proper messed up, and they're pale as all hell. Yeah, yeah. And they look a little bit like a load of Michael Jacksons running about. They do look a bit like a load of Michael Jacksons running around. Um, they, <laughs> they, catch, uh, <laughs> they catch Norman Reedus and they string him up again, but then instantly sort of like start cutting out his guts and eating them and 
Um, they yeah. don't even, don't cook him. Nothing. They just oh. gobble him, gobble him up. Um, gobble him down, and, and he, he goes, doesn't look happy about it. Hideo Kojima, <laughs> he'll be in your game in ten years. Yeah, and he turned out to be true. Turned out to be right. Yeah. Well, How do you reckon that happened? Do you reckon Hideo is just a big fan of Walking Dead? Hideo's a big fan of like American culture in general, isn't he? Like, yeah, he's always going on about. Uh, that's like Del Toro. He's a big fan of Del Toro as well. So he's always always going about the films and stuff. Um, okay, so right, okay, so Dennis Quay is on the radio, but I don't think we hear too much from him at the minute. He's starting to have some weird hear noises and stuff around the little bit of shit where he is. Um, Norman Reedus is being eaten alive. Well, oh yeah, so that, we realise that like there's something wrong with the reactor, like the ship. Is like mm-hmm. shuddering every now and again. It sort of pulses with energy, and he says like the, the reactor's crashing and it's going to blow up or implode or something. Um, and so we meet. Is it around about now? We meet two other characters as well. So there's there's the woman Nadia, yeah, who's a woman who's like woman. just silent but deadly and French, <laughs> and French, um, and she kind of just she. She kicks and punches before asking any questions. Like Ben yeah. Foster, whoopa! Yeah. Uh, and there's another guy called called. Apparently his name's Man, but I never realised that. And maybe your name's Woman. <laughs> um, yeah. he doesn't. So he doesn't speak. He doesn't speak English, and he's kind of like he ha- he pretty much helps him at some point, doesn't he? Okay, so yes. Yeah, so after this bit, Ben Foster runs away and he slips over the edge of his thing, uh, and Man helps him out, kills a uh, like he's Cheers, like man. he's full on. <laughs> He's full on. No, yeah, cheers, dude. No, cheers, man. Assassin's yeah. Creed. <laughs> he's a, uh, he's Assassin's Creed, isn't he? What do you mean? What, well, the he game? just looks very Assassin's Creed. Uh, okay. man, oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's got like he's got like a weapon. He's got like a hood up. Yeah. Um, he's climby. <laughs> he's climby. All that stuff. Yeah. Um. So he um he does like uh, weird jujitsu maneuvers, and he sort of slices one of the throats. He he's like. Proper badass, really, like a fighting dude. Um, so, I mean, at this point, I mean, you obviously knew what the what the what the, the overarching story was, but what did you think was going on at this point? Uh, did you think many years ago I had no idea, which is why I kind of liked it. Okay, so I was kind of thinking at this time whether that they'd crash landed somewhere and yeah. people from another time had got on there, whether there's some sort of like parallel universe thing. And then I was thinking about it, like maybe time had been accelerated somehow, and yeah, that was yeah. how. But then I guess, yeah, we'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, so okay, so I think uh, him and man run away, and at some point they come into contact with the woman again, and then yep. they what start man? scrapping. But Ben Foster's got um, a gauntlet gun that like shoots yeah. sound waves. It's like the shocker, you know, for Spider-Man villain. Yeah, he has, he has that weapon. It's a little hat. Um, I thought at this point, now again taking into account the overarching story, surely man and woman would have like met each other, come across each other before. Big ship, innit? If they've both been existing in this big ship for whatever amount of time. I do big wonder ship, where man lives. Could we go? We find out where she lives because she lives with her, like her botany lab, botany. Well, he, like he, so apparently, man, man was like a, a agriculture. So, oh, okay, yeah. He was a farmer in Ting. Maybe he was living in a bloody farm area. I don't know what that would be. Because he was amazed to see someone on the flight crew. That's why he's following uh, Ben Foster and helping him. Because he wants to get off or something. Or uh. who knows? <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to. He wants to, he yeah. wants to get him. Or so I don't know. <laughs> so okay. So yeah, they all go into this chamber, which is basically where Nadia, Nadia the man. Has yeah. been living. She's got a nice little setup, a nice little bed, <laughs> yeah. um, and a steady diet of crickets. Yeah, they're good for protein. There doesn't seem to be enough food around for people to survive. Very no, long there at all. doesn't. Unless there's like a load of bloody tins or something somewhere. Um, yeah. I guess at this point there's a bit of um, there's all the Dennis the... Quaid stuff, right? Where yeah, yeah. And there's, a, there's a bit, a bit of a backstory now, which which Nadia gives us, sort of explains what's been going on. I guess. Oh yeah, of course, ship. yeah, yeah. So she so says, quite... "There's like some 
uh, hyper evolutionary food substance that's pumped into uh, the people who are, who are asleep's bodies in the hypersleep because when they reach Tannis, they're going to need to evolve quickly to adapt to the yeah. new the, this new world. Um, they said, and she said, it's all these cannibals are basically people. Well, it, it, it gets a bit more complicated later on. Um, yeah, but uh, but basically, these cannibals they've adapted, hyper evolved and hyper adapted to living on this on this powerless spaceship. So they've yeah. adapted to live there, and that's it's weird because like all there's like all the hypersleep pods, like thousands of them, and every now and again one opens up and they kind of just eat, they just eat these people like they're like fruits. Yeah, ripe. For I mean, that's me- I'm, like imagine waking up, yeah, from hypersleep. Oh, what's going on? I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you'd yeah. eat it, wouldn't it you? Would be pretty, yeah. yeah, it wouldn't be good. Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> bloody hell, um, I've been eating. Okay, so while while they're having a bit of a chill and they're eating some crickets and drinking some tea, um, spilling the tea about their situation, uh, yeah. Dennis Quaid, another man who he he was at the start of the film, um, briefly, uh, but, and he's kind of he's been a bit of a lazy bastard. He's been sat at the the, the deck, like well, deck where it is. He uh, he, he chilling. falls out of the thing naked, out of the wall naked, right? <laughs> Isn't that what happens? Like he saw his birth from the war. He, he's like as if he's been hiding there. Oh, what is this? Is this the other uh, another guy, the younger guy, who turns up? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Dennis Quaid. so yeah, yeah, yeah. So a younger guy. He basically Dennis Quaid finds this young guy just in the tubes, essentially. Lucky guy. Um, covered <laughs> covered it covered in motor oil, completely naked. You'd be like, <laughs> how on earth did you get there? Yeah. But like it's weird because every what time. What the hell are you doing? I mean, it's almost like too obvious now that I watch it back because there's bits where it, it turns away, and goes back, and the guy's suddenly got clothes on. Like it's it's uh, okay, yeah. kind of not. I mean, maybe if you, if you didn't know, I don't know. Cause I don't I didn't know the twists when I first saw it. Um, this film's full of twists, lots of twists. Um, a lot of twisties, isn't there? Yeah. I do a twisty. <laughs> so uh, Dennis Quaid. Uh, it's not keen on this other guy. Um, he's wary about him. He's got like a, a little pellet gun, fit, like a BB gun or something. It's gonna yeah, I'd be wary of him because this guy's attitude, his attitude stinks. That's what he's saying. Right? I think. This guy's attitude stinks. Yeah. He's like he's he's aggressive, confrontational. He jumps to conclusions. He just doesn't seem to be. Dennis Quaid's like, I'm trying to help you here, mate. And he's yeah. like, Yeah, you're trying to help me, are you? You're trying to help me, are you? Help this. Can't help me. Well, this guy's his nose is bleeding, he's uh, shaking, he's got all the signs of Pandora, all the classic symptoms of Pandorum. Um, yeah, classic Pandora. You look at him, you go, Pandorum in it, mate. Pandorum, yeah, just skin covering Pandorum. Uh, so then um, the other guys, they make their way towards the, the generator, but they take a wrong turn, and then they end up in a scrap with um, a big one. And they they beat the shit out of it like there's proper like stabbing it like like mental they're shanking yeah, it yeah. all they all just... basically they all <laughs> three on three on one and it seems it is the point where they struggle so much to beat one yeah. that we're like these guys are screwed because it's like throwing them around and they all manage to get the best of it but then loads of them kind of like appear yeah and come come over there's like loads of them there's hundreds of them and that's when they realise yeah that's it we're screwed yeah so they they run for it. One of those people in the chambers wakes up. He gets eaten instantly, and they're running away. And they find a way to safety, um, but it turns out to be a trap because they run into another guy who's a chef who cooks. He makes them like a some soup out of motor oil. Like he actually says it's like oil or something. Um, yeah. yeah, motor oil soup. Uh. He gives more backstory to the to the what happened on the ship, and it doesn't make. Yes. I'm not too sure what he's on about. He says there's three captains on the ship, and he does it all. He has like these sort of um, cave painting style. Yeah, he's kind of like scratched into the into yeah. the metal wall. These sort of stories, the things that he thinks are correct. So, first of all, he says that planet Earth is gone. Planet yeah. Earth vanished, exploded. There was an unknown catastrophe. Um, yeah. Hmm. Something, something bad. So that that was why certain members of the ship went insane because it was like they're the last, last living humans floating out in 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 nothingness while planet Earth is essentially gone. So what does that mean for rules and regulations and 
and laws and what does it yeah. mean? What does it mean? We've got to start again. Yeah. Um, so he says one of them went nuts and killed the other two and then started waking random people up and killing them as well or like yeah so I think he started waking up random people and sort of goading them into sort of like a violent and tribal culture somehow yeah. um, and then when he got bored he went back into hypersleep um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah I've had enough of this and so basically aided by that ex- accelerated evolution enzyme that yeah. some of them had been sort of having that was how they turned into those sort of cannibalistic weird mutants when they adjusted to the ships. Um, yeah. So obviously, yeah. Okay. So that kind of makes sense. That it kind of sort of makes sense. Extent. Yeah. But then the guy, the guy telling him the story, he bloody gasses them, doesn't he? Cheeky. And they all wake up upside down, and he's like, "Guys, gotta eat! I gotta eat these guys!" Yeah. But, he, um, he stamps the uh, the botanist in the, in the belly. See, that's quite a commitment. He stabs one of them in the belly, but then he's talked down from eating them pretty easily. Yeah. Where where Ben Foster's like, look, we've got less than an hour until the reactor basically explodes and you die. Yeah, he's um, like, probably so should have you stabbed need... that woman so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward. Sorry, uh, uh, can we can we be friends? Yeah. So he takes it out. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't, I think. Uh, I think she takes it out. He's anyway. like, I don't know, you better leave it on. Sorry. They made their way to the reactor. The reactor turned out to be where all of the cannibal people sleep. Um, ben Foster falls into it, <laughs> into the pit of them, puts some skin on, and he sort of wriggles his way through him. Um, they yeah. take him into so it's the like tribe. it's like a it's like a sea a sea of like these cannibalistic um, yeah. humanoid weird pale creatures, like grey skin. Yeah, and he's kind of like crawling all over, and they're all sort of like writhing, and they're all a bit greasy. Like, what are we supposed slippery, to think? It's... Yeah, slippery smooth. Um, slippery and smooth. Yeah, makes them really easy to get by because Ben just sort of slides forward. He slides <laughs> he across slides them on his across front. the top. <laughs> like one of those things you put in the garden, that long <laughs> like the tarpaulin, yeah. and you just slide on your belly. But he goes too far. He slides across them, and then yeah, <laughs> he goes yeah, yeah. side. <laughs> um. um what happens? I mean, the bridge breaks. Then, man tries to hang on to man, the bridge. Man's thing. holding on to it for ages. Man is holding on to it for at least ten minutes. Man um, do what man got to do. So, so ba- Bauer does. <laughs> <laughs> Bauer does manage to restart the reactor. It sort of kills loads of the mutants, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and they all sort of like flee, but then man gets like um, cornered by the like leader of them, who is yeah. basically who is who is Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. And they have a dance off. <laughs> Basically, they have a fight, a fight to the death. Man manages to kill the leader. Just it's pretty brutal. Like they're stabbing each other. He gets they're eaten each other a little around. bit. The guy like bites his yep. ribs off. <laughs> yeah, he's biting it to him. And then you, as soon as you think man's won, there's like yeah. a weird mutant child who turns up. Who's pretty freaky looking, right? Yeah, he knows kung fu as well. And this mutant child just believes slices his throat. Yeah. Does it as easy as nothing. A man's um, dead. Yeah. He does it as easy. He does it as easy as nothing. But yeah. uh, man did man did pretty well. We all couldn't all survive. Uh, so, but then uh, what's his name? The cook who tried to eat everyone gets to what's the his bridge. flavor? What's his flavor? Gets to the bridge. Uh, oh, at this point, it's, it's Dennis Cat Quaid from Red Dwarf, isn't it? That's what I kept thinking. <laughs> yeah, maybe it looks a bit like him. Um, so Dennis Quaid has been having a scrap with the younger guy who was birthed, the younger naked guy who was birthed out of the wall. Um, and then as they were scrapping, they realised they were the same person. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, always yeah, happens. <laughs> you had to punch him and you go, oh, bloody hell, that yeah. bloody stings. I mean, it's a bit of a Fight Club reveal. Obviously nowhere yeah. near as cool as that or yeah. as well earned as a Fight Club reveal. But there's a bit where they're kind of like, their hands sort of go into one, isn't they? Like, yeah, yeah. And he goes... It was bloody me all along. I was a young guy I found in a ship. He, yes, yeah, so he was the guy who uh, woke up and started a tribal race. <laughs> yeah, so he's a mess, he's a messed it. up guy. He's got yeah. Pandora big time, but he is basically essentially the big, big the big the big bad. He's the, basically yeah. the big bad. Yeah. Um. Um. But so uh, the chef, um, Cat, arrives at the uh, the bridge. And as he's like, oh, we made it. Um, hi, I'm the chef, by the way. He gets uh, 
like a needle right in the eye, and he pumps. Yep. He pumps his eye up with. Uh, he pumps his eye up massively. Yeah. It's quite. A little, I didn't realize it last time, but this time he it kind of prolapses his eye. It's uh, it swells yeah, up. Not the best, is it? No. Um. So then we're left to two. There's just um Ben Foster and the woman. <laughs> woman. Woman. Um. They get to the bridge. And then now Ben Foster's got Pandora. His fingers are shaking. He's seen yeah. creatures cr- crawling out of walls that aren't there. He's See, um... at this point. At this point, I started thinking, "Oh wait, have they been imagining the creatures all along?" Yeah, yeah. It was a bit confusing, I think. I mean, I know I don't think that was the case, but I think it was no, a bit no. confusing. It, did, it just kind of didn't need to have that. You should have imagined yeah. something else. I don't know, like an op- an octopus smoking a cigar or a bloody fish finger covered in Christmas tree lights. I don't know. <laughs> As um. As he's imagining fish fingers covered in Christmas tree lights, uh, Dennis Quaid, I think, is strangling the woman. She's about dead anyway. She got stabbed in the stomach a while back. Um, yeah, it's months ben off. Foster shoots the wall, an event flies off and. <laughs> hang on a sec. <laughs> hang on a sec. There's a bit earlier where they're like, Where are we? We don't know where we are in space. Um, so then, what's his name? Dennis Quaid does the reveal when he opens the, the shutters over the windows. And it's like pitch black outside, and it's like there's no stars. Creepy. Where are they in space? It's, there's nothing out there at all. Um, so anyway, so she's getting strangled. He shoots the vent off the wall by accident. The vent flies up and hits the window, and it wasn't double glazed. <laughs> A single glazing, yeah, single yeah. glazing. Single glazing. Is this when we see? We, 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 do we see what's out there now? Uh, oh yeah, it must, it must be around here. Uh, we yeah. see fish, like a deep sea glowing type of mariner trench type yeah. of fish, right? So yeah, we find out that they are they're under the bloody water, mate. They're under the ocean. On so the ship has crash landed on Ty- Tannis. Tannis. Yeah. On Tannis. Um so obviously it's got a very similar like um atmosphere to Earth. Um and then there is a reveal which says that nine hundred and twenty three years have passed since yeah. the mission launched. So Ben Foster's been asleep all that time. That's why these different societies have managed to. That's why I had like chicken baked chicken skin, baked chicken skin, up. gravy skin. Um, I wonder how long the other ones are supposed to be have been awake then. Like the don't, really, don't really say, does it? Yeah. Yeah. So the ship reached Tannis 800 years ago and landed itself in the ocean. Um, so basically, yeah. Then the ship sort of collapses in on itself. All the water comes in. Yeah. We don't know what happens to Dennis Quaid. No, he kind of just goes. He, he, we see him sort of just go ah, yeah. like he don't want to. He don't want to get his air wet. He goes ah, yeah. not me, not me, burn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so uh, Ben Foster shoves the woman into. I can't remember her name. Um, I can't just keep calling her the woman. Nadia. <laughs> Nadia into a, into the pod that he woke up in, I think, and that turns into an escape pod, and it shoots uh, them upwards into the water. Uh, and they emerge on the surface of the water, um, yeah. and then the ship, because there was an emergency hull breach, is shot, is evacuated all the passengers, and yeah. all of them start arriving, start <laughs> popping up. Yeah, it's good start popping yeah, out. I like it. Um, and then they arrive on the on the surface of the water, and luckily there's, there's like land, like right there, and he, it's like America. <laughs> Or something. Like that. <laughs> it's like America. You see it the statue. Of, you see the statue of Liberty yeah. hanging out of the wall. Out of it's, the like it's an eight. It's an eight. <laughs> yeah. And they see him at Don- <laughs> they see the McDonald's M and they go, "Thank God for that." <laughs> I am absolutely gasping for a quarter pound of a cheese. So they all make their way to McDonald's, uh, and as they walk into the Golden Arches, the credits roll. It's a good ending. Credits roll. Yeah, and then yeah. Ben Foster turns to her and goes, "I ain't got any change." <laughs> So okay, so that ended. So I mean, th- there's a few reveals in this film. Uh, there's a reveal about the creatures being humans who evolved. There's a reveal about Dennis Quaid being two people who thought, thought he was be one person who thought he was two. And there's a twist about them being on Tannis this whole time. What? Yeah. How do you feel about it? I mean, what? Pretty twisty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think I liked the the twist elements and the way certain things were revealed. I don't know if it was done in particularly the best way. As I said, I was a bit confused, especially when you know um, Ben Foster started 
um, hallucinating that there was mutants there. I was like, oh, right, so there weren't mutants there at all. Maybe the mutants were part of Pandora. But then, then they were there again. So I was like, right, okay, I don't think that's right. So yeah, it was a bit they're, confusing. They're, they're for me. definitely there, I think, yeah. They're definitely there, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it was. I think it was a pretty good ending. I just don't necessarily like all the ways it went about getting there. Okay. If that makes sense. That makes sense, mate. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll do a rating in a second. Very curious to get your thoughts on that. But um, some trivia for you. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Correct answer. Okay. <laughs> number two. <laughs> uh, number one. The movie was originally planned to be shot on video as a low-budget feature. For how much money? 10k 20k or 200k oh well let's say 200k big money uh yeah 200k so he was going to make it on his own back um the entire film (laughs) just on (laughs) on his own back yeah Uh, very small set you can use miniatures um (laughs) Yeah, two hundred K, but uh, he ended up getting uh, Paul W S Anderson read the script and then handed it to some producers who ended up uh, greenlighting the film. Yeah. Um, okay, number two, anti oh, and ant anti Trowy, <laughs> <laughs> the kung fu botanist anti Trowy, anti Tracy maybe I don't know how to say his name anti Trow. Uh, the Kung Fu Boston has recently played a supervillain in a superhero movie. What superhero movie was that, and what supervillain did she play? Oh wait, well she's a botanist in something. Did you say? Why in the this? One who... In this? Yeah, is that what you said? Is I don't know if you know if botany is the right thing, but her. The, yeah, Nadia. The Boston, she yeah. in? Was she in Wonder Woman or something? You go. Nope. You guess again. Am I, uh, is DC correct? Uh yeah okay <laughs> get one more guess. Um, so DC is correct. Is a mm-hmm. DC? Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. Oh, interesting. Was she in? I don't know that one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, Justice League. Close. Man of Steel. Ah. Oh um, right, she was one man of the spell M A H N of Steel. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> The only way to spell it. So she, she was, was one, one of the Kryptonians. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, played I know, mate. Fa- Faur- Fa- F- Gee, why are these she, words she so played difficult? Woman. <laughs> Faura. Faura. Woman Kryptonian. Faura or something like that. Oh, okay. Dear Faura. Number three. Wherever you are. Yeah. There is a Facebook group of fans demanding a Pandorum sequel. Is it A true, B false, C half true, or D not false? Or is it that maybe truth is relative and there are no absolutes? Mm, interesting. <laughs> I want to say the latter, but I'm just going to go, just going to make it easy and say true. Correct, it's true. Um, there's a this is this film is classed as a cult movie. It has a, a pretty hungry group of fans, and I went on a Facebook group today, and they're still banging on about it. <laughs> Ten years later, <laughs> still bloody angry. But <laughs> wake up in the morning, and you go, Pandorum sequel yet? <laughs> no. Nope. All right. I suppose I better get a look at my day. I've got a. Uh, apparently, uh, the the uh, filmmakers. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. What's his name? Christian Alvart is a member of the Facebook group, and he sometimes talks to them because he wants to get a sequel made as well. There's going to be a prequel and a sequel, and there's also a mobile game that actually got made. Um, if this film did well, they were going to make a, a a sequel and a prequel. Um, he's there, basically uh, demanding. He's demanding the film be made. He's like, "Well, you make it," and he's going, "I can't be bothered. Someone yeah. else make it." It's cool, though. I think that it's um, cause I, mean, I can see why. I mean, I've it's obviously hit a thing with me over the years because I still think about it every now and again. You know, every night when I'm in bed, I think about Pandora. <laughs> why not? Um, so it's cool. This they've still got that sort of uh, fan base. Okay, number four. How much did the film gross? Was it a? Ugh, gross. 10 critics, yeah. B, 20 critics, C, most of the critics, or D, 20.6 million? 20.6 million. It was 20 critics. Oh. Uh, it was actually 20.6 million. I think the film cost... What was the budget? 30 point something million. So it wasn't a huge uh, loss. What are you going to do? It wasn't a huge loss, but to be fair, if you lost 10 million, you'd be fucked. I'd be pretty angry. It's like, you, live, you live it when you find uh, a million pound note in your pocket. Where's that come from? 
<laughs> Where's that come from? It, uh, but it's been wa- it's been washed and it's just crust. <laughs> uh, number five. This film was produced by what country? Was Germany. It? Yeah. How do you know that? Because I looked earlier about the director, didn't I? And he was German. Uh, you and I think I remember drafting. I remember read I remember reading somewhere that it was shot in Berlin or something like that. Like oh. on location in Berlin somewhere on underwater in... on tennis. And, yeah. On... <laughs> It was shot on location in Tannis <laughs> underwater. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the movie was financed by Constantine Film. Um, partnership helped fund a oh, forty million dollar production. It says so. That's a bit. They lost half of the money. Um, Constantine drew subsidies from Germany's Maidenburg Berlin Brandenburg Regional Film Fund, the general the German Federal Film Board, which I guess is like our lottery film fund. Um, yeah. The German Federal Film Fund provided six million to the production. Okay, yeah. So. I don't know. I thought I thought that would be uh, uh, more difficult to get, but you obviously... German Federal German Federal Film Fund. Yeah, yeah difficult whatever. to say. Um, okay, so well done, all of them. Right uh, now, we need to rate the film. Oh, this is tough. This is tough because I think overall, yeah, I was pretty into it, but I didn't feel as it... <laughs> this is going to sound mad. I don't think I was that into it whilst watching it. Mm. But afterwards, mm. I was like, "Well, oh, maybe that was all right." Maybe I wasn't. So I don't think I don't. I, so I don't think I can go too high, because I think that would be silly. So I'm going to settle at just a C plus. I think. Interesting. Which is kind of like pretty middle of the road. Yeah. As I said, I think I liked a lot of the ideas that were here. Um, I like a sci-fi horror. I like flick. to do the cha cha. I like to do. I like to do the cha cha. I like Ben Foster. Um, I think it was a bit heavy-handed sometimes with like explaining certain things to us. There was always someone who sort of knew, and they go, mm. "What word am I thinking of when that happens? When someone just tells you rather than shows exposition? You? Oh no, show, exposition. Like show the show didn't tell. Oh well, yeah, show. yeah. Tell don't show. Yes, well, show don't tell. Like the exposition was a bit, a bit too much at times, and felt like, <coughs> yeah. But I think it's a pretty solid film. It's probably a bit dated, despite the fact it's only ten mm. years old. Yeah. It feels a bit Resident Evilly. But yeah, I'd go for a C plus. I think I'd give it kind of middle of the road. Don't want to go too yeah. hard on. Well, I, well okay. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's a perfect film. No, I think it's a very good film. But I do think it's good. I think it's better. <laughs> I think it's better than Resident Evil films, personally. Um, I it's better like, than... Yeah, it's, it's probably better than, better than a lot of them. Yeah. It's probably better than all of them, except maybe the first one, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. When we watched that first one recently, as soon as the zombies arrive, it turns into dog shit. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else before that was great, but yeah, zombies was, turn yeah. up in Resident Evil, and it was shite. <laughs> For this film, like, um, I don't know. I think as an older man, I'm going to give it a C plus. As a sort of 20-year-old person who enjoys sort of slightly out there weirder films that have a mix of everything in there uh watch them at three o'clock in the morning i would i would have been given, i would have write a b plus what yeah but you can't give films different ratings based on different past versions of yourself <laughs> well no just, just, just explaining yeah. that like six six-year-old me would say oh don't like it scary turn it off <laughs> f <laughs> ten-year-old me might have been like yes yeah, all right <laughs> uh well okay I, I think I think if you're a younger person, I think at a certain areas in your life you smoke and drink a lot. This is a cool film to just put on and enjoy. I mean, I like Ghosts of Mars, and this is a better film than that. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I think I, I think it depends what mood you're in. Yeah, but, because sometimes it is nice to watch um, shit. Well, not shit. This nice, isn't shit. Yeah, I don't, it's... This isn't shit. But sometimes it's nice to watch uh, schlocky. Things. Yeah, okay. right yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the sweat like... elements in this film. I think um, just a, a little bit misguided in places, but overall, a pretty good effort. But I'm gonna give it a C plus. Um, what did I give it? C plus. C plus plus. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll give it a code. C. I'll give it a C then, just to just to go against the green. Right, I'm gonna go with uh, no, ah. I can't go any higher. Uh, okay, that's it. That's it. Next week, uh, you're gonna be doing some Doctor Sleep. Yeah, um, should be should be good. Well, is well, I've seen it. It's pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what else to tell you. That's about it. God, I think you should. If you've not seen Pandorum, I think you should go check it out. I think it's good. 
I thought you were talking to me then. I was like, I've seen it. I've <laughs> <laughs> just been talking about it. <laughs> I've just been talking about it for a bloody hour. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, as of a, as above, so below, or this film, what would you say to people to go watch? Probably as above, so below, just because I think it's a, a, a rare, good, fine footage film from the last... What year was that come out? Five years? Ten and years? And it's on Five Netflix. Uh, and it's but, on Netflix, exactly. Yeah. So if you've got Netflix, you could just slip it on. It's not... Oh, yeah. So Pandora, you might yeah. have... Pandora, you're gonna to have to go down your local CEX to find it on DVD for 50p. And then you're gonna, it's gonna skip when you're trying to watch it. And you try and clean it, or you try and take it back, and you just, you just don't. It just sits some, on the shelf. Some guys some been using body it. Body wants some. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, man. All right. Um, so this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver.com and grab a free book. Become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Thanks to Kovacs Cameron for our theme music. Thanks to ACAS for hosting the show. Thanks to the people in the Facebook group. Go to Facebook and search for Horror Hangout Board of Advisors. And go and buy a t shirt at hawkcleaver.com. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I've got to get it. I still haven't got a t shirt. That's really at all. how rude of me. Yeah. No, try them. They're pretty no, good. I've They're like it. shirts, but with like shorter sleeves. Um, I've, only okay. got, I've only got string vests. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. You were in Blazer Squad, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For a little while. For a little while. <laughs> yeah. Um and then you started a solo career. So exactly. thanks to the listeners. If you enjoyed the show, thanks. And thanks to my co host Ben for being yeah. a dude. Yeah, thanks everyone. Uh thank you very much, Luke. It's been a pleasure as always. That's right. it. That's, That's it. the end of what I was gonna say. Right. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.